You are here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. What you feel. I feel it. It's the Matrix. It's approach to regression. It's examples in R. Examples in SAS. Oh, thank goodness, it's the last week. It's the bread and butter, baby, what's your chance? Greetings Bad 6611. In this little snippet video, we're going to take a look at how we can implement the regression approach with matrices in SAS using PROC IML. For the example from our lecture slides where we had blood pressure and birth weight um, from the Rosner textbook. So just to remind ourselves, there were 16 infants and we have our outcome here of systolic blood pressure. We then have our design matrix X, which includes that column of ones for the intercept term, as well as columns for our birth weight in ounces and age in days. And so with that, let's switch over here to take a look at the SAS code and walk through some of the considerations and steps for what we're doing in case you want to run through and explore it on your own. And then we'll finish by running the code and see how the results match what we got previously. Again, what we're going to see here is that everything's going to be contained within this PROC IML statement. And so we're going to do a lot of work within this one procedure. For example, we're going to create that design matrix here. And visually, we're just writing it in a way that we see that each row corresponds to one of our 16 observations and the design matrix corresponding to that person. We then see below here that we'll create the outcome vector to use for the observed outcomes of the systolic blood pressure. Now, what we see here are a few things to note. First off, remember, SAS does not consider or um, have to deal with capitalization issues like R does. And so whether something's capitalized or not, it will treat X that we defined above in the capital form identically as if we treat it without the capitalization. What we see here though is that we're calculating these various matrix quantities of interest of X transpose X, X transpose Y, Y transpose Y, and then the inverse of that X transpose X. Again, remember our syntax that we noted before is that this little grave accents symbol is what we use to calculate the transpose of a given matrix. So here it's X transpose. In SAS, matrix multiplication, multiplication does use that asterisk for times, then our design matrix X. We can also note here that we've stored this in an object XPX, which we can then use when we're calculating the inverse as putting that into the inv function here. Once we have those calculated, we can scroll down here to calculate our various regression components of interest and the different types of sums of squares that might be of use. For example, we can calculate beta hat as that x transpose x inverse times x transpose y. We can also calculate the sums of square for our model of regression, the sums of square attributable to error, as well as the total sums of square. Also of use is to calculate that estimate of the mean square error based on these calculations above, and also the variance of our beta coefficients that we'll want to use potentially for inference. A few things to note here is that we do combine some of these different terms. We have, again, this beta hat vector. We're taking the transpose with that little grave accent symbol. Again, multiplying by x transpose times that vector y. Here we have our uh, summation of all the terms stored in that vector y. And we also are using the n row function to count the number of rows within that vector. With this information, though, we can calculate things like our beta 1 estimate, the variance of the beta coefficient, a t-statistic and p-value to use for inference. And so here we see we're defining that contrast or that vector to extract that information, where for beta 1, we just have a 1 there for beta 1 and a 0 for beta not, beta not and beta 2. We then see we're just applying the formulas we had in our slide before based on the different components we had above. And so we see below here, we just are storing all of these results in different objects that we can then call later on when we print our various summaries. We can likewise do the exact same thing for beta 2 if we were interested in looking at the effect of age, where again here our contrast or our vector, we just put 0 and 0 for beta naught and beta 1, and a value of 1 for beta 2. Now we can also note here as well that the probability from the t distribution can be calculated using this equation or this function here, prop t, where we'll take that negative of the absolute value um, of our t statistic and also incorporate our degrees of freedom calculation. 
if we scroll down here, we're going to see that based on what we calculated above, we are printing a variety of different statistics and summary objects to review. And we'll walk through those here in a second, but just to note that there is a lot of information we generated that we can look at. What we'll also note here finally as well is that we'll compare our matrix derived answers above to the results if we were to use PROC reg. And so here we just have a little data statement to enter the data that we can use then in PROC reg. And below here we see that we'll implement PROC reg itself. A few things to note again for our arguments here is that we do request information such as the covariance matrix uh, that we would did calculate above by hand with our matrices, the confidence intervals for our beta coefficients, and also this XPX, which will print the matrix cross products that are really underlying all of these calculations that, again, we did by hand. So we'll pause the video here for a second to run the code and then walk through the results. We've now run our model. and We've also pulled up our slides again just to compare the results that we did by hand to see how they match to our SAS output. So one thing we can note, the first thing we printed was that outcome vector and the design matrix that we programmed into PROC IML just to see the results of. We can then note here that we have our summaries of our, in these first three, we've combined this information together or concatenated it for the sake of printing it, but we have our X transpose X, our X transpose Y, and our Y transpose Y estimates. All of which we see here if we compare between our slide results and what we see on the screen for our SAS output does match. If we scroll down then we can see our X transpose X inverse as well. Here our three by three square matrix also matches the results we have on slide 19. We scroll down here a little more then in our slides we have our estimated beta hats which we can compare to our SAS output which does match. And we also have a host of our sums of square for the model the error, the total sums of square, and the MSE we've calculated here as well, of which of particular interest is our estimate for the MSE, which does match approximately our estimate over here with a little difference due to rounding. We can also see that the variance covariance matrix as well matches our result on slide 21 of our lecture notes. And then if we scroll down a little more to actually look at the estimated uh, beta coefficient for beta hat 1, and it's given standard error, in this case the square root of our variance on slide 22, those match as well. And then scrolling a little further to slide 23 demonstrates as well that we have a t value and p value that match our calculated statistics here. And we didn't calculate beta 2, but we can note from the regression output from R in our slides, those values do match as well. What we can then see if we scroll a little further down in our SAS output here is that we have the output of our X transpose uh, cross product matrix at XPX command. And this is again just summarizing the different quantities that uh, may be of interest. Really of use though is scrolling down to verify our results, which we can check by scrolling up above does match our results here or we can note by going over here to look at our R results match as well. One thing just to note that we haven't seen a lot of this semester because we primarily worked in R is that SAS does provide in PROC reg a lot of these diagnostic plots that we had to manually generate or select automatically in this three by three grid, as well as some other partial residuals for our multiple linear regression approach. So that will wrap up our brief exploration of how to use PROC IML for the example in our lecture slides, but we can always discuss further in class if you have additional questions.